Hello and welcome into another video on the Pat Talks Hockey channel. Today we are going to be talking about the Florida Panthers and the Tampa Bay Lightning. So before I get into that, just want to let you guys aware that there's other content on the channel. Uh, you can check out my Game 3 review of the Bruins and Leafs. Very interesting uh, topics discussed in that video, like Swayman versus Olmark, William Nylander's injury, uh, the controversy with Brad Marchand and Tyler Bertuzzi, all that fun stuff. So I recommend checking that out, supporting the channel, hitting subscribe, liking the video so they get shown to other people so we can grow a community on this channel. That being said, let's talk about Florida and Tampa. So this is a series that I think a lot of people who maybe casually watched the NHL the last year or two probably thought Tampa was going to do better in. And I think people who were paying closer attention kind of realized there was a bit of a speed gap between these teams, a bit of a style gap. And you're starting to realize that this Tampa Bay dynasty is starting to fade. And I call them a dynasty. Some people say three cups is a dynasty. Some say two. I, I just put them there because they were very dominant for a bit. They went to multiple cup finals. I want to say four. So I'm just going to qualify that because it's so hard in the modern era to get to that many cup finals in that time period. That being said, we are, we are past that, I think, at this point. I think there are teams that have risen up in the Eastern Conference and have beaten Tampa. Last year, Toronto beat Tampa. If you want a red flag, there's your red flag. Then things are going downhill. And now you're looking down the barrel of getting eliminated in the first round, two straight years, and this year, a good shot at being swept in the first round, which makes you think Tampa Bay needs to change something. But the thing is, Tampa Bay is in a tough position right now. And, you know, well, we'll get into, the, I, I have the chart with their cap situation, all that. We'll go over that in a minute. But uh, just looking at the game yesterday, if you, you want to look at a great opportunity to win a game, this was it for Tampa. It really was. Uh, zero power plays for the Florida Panthers in a playoff hockey game. We all know that's probably a referee issue. There's no way you're going 60 minutes without getting a power play in the playoffs. Um, unless you're the Bruins and Lightning in 2011, Game 7. But regardless, Tampa Bay got four compared to Florida zero. They didn't convert on a single one. Uh, they still got out shot by two despite having a four four power play advantage. You could be like, well, maybe they didn't get shots in the power play. But that's still a time where Florida isn't putting up shots, and they still go over 30 without a single power play. You look above that, I include the shot totals from game one and two. You got 28 to 19 and 37 to 23. Tampa Bay's just been outplayed in this series. It goes, you know, you see two one-score games, and you see last night where Florida won by two, you know, close games, but the edge is significantly in Florida's favor when you watch and you actually see what's going on. Uh, you look here uh, at the stats this series for Tampa. You can see on the left here, I include their personal stats. I then included the shot differential uh, by game played, games played. As you can see, Tampa Bay is a negative 8.3, so obviously Florida is going to be positive 8.3 but of all the series that I played three games it's significantly different you can see Toronto has the next best differential with four double that for Florida they're really just steamrolling Tampa during the course of the game slowly grinding them away and it kind of comes down to the goaltenders now you look at Andre Vasilevsky's stats here 904 save percentage I think that really just comes down to him playing pretty well, but the team not really supporting him. If you watch these games, both goalies have been pretty good. It's just some of the chances that are given up by Tampa Bay are pretty great A chances. And Vasilevsky's doing his damnedest back there, but the team in front of him just isn't holding up well. You look at the points total, you'll see Stamkos with four in three games, two of them on the power play. Uh, Nikita Kucherov, three and three. Hedman, three and three, point two and three. Duclair two and three and then a drop off with about six guys in one point and it kind of goes to show that uh beyond the big guys Stamkos, Kucherov, Point, and Hedman who are all in the first power play this team cannot generate anything they really cannot it, the depth is it's a shallow team it's an extremely shallow offensive team right now and I think you're looking at an issue coming up next year where you're, you're going to be asking yourself how does Tampa Bay continue to compete at a high level with aging players and not a lot of money to kind of work with. And that kind of goes into the next thing I want to talk about, which is Tampa Bay's cap situation, which let me get the stats off of here real quick because that was not supposed to be there. And let me find it real quick. I believe it should be this one. Yep, let me make that smaller. Sorry about that. And you can see coming up next year, Tampa Bay, you see the left column on here. That's this year. 
when you look at the numbers, the first column is left. So you see the roster size this year is 25, roster size next year is 17. You then look at projected cap space, they're at zero right now because in the playoffs, they're actually about 10 mil over the cap right now. And then next year, after all these guys who you see UFAs go off the books before they get signed or not, there's only 10 million to play with. And you look up here and Steven Stamkos is one of these guys who's a UFA. So if you sign Stamkos, he's 34 years old, you sign him, let's say you sign Stamkos to 6 mil, you're down to 4 mil. So you're looking at the same team losing Duclair or signing Duclair and then having no depth beyond him, or you're going to lose Matt Dumba, who I think that was a pure rental anyway. And you're probably looking at a team that cannot add much unless there are big trades or they just move on from Stamkos and just go in a different direction. But it's hard to see that considering Stamkos is one of the few guys who can finish on this team. Uh, it, it really makes you wonder what Tampa Bay is going to do in the offseason, how they're really going to retool. They might not. They might just run back the same team. I think if Tampa Bay runs back the same team, you, you run the risk of missing the playoffs next year. I know that's kind of surprising to say for Tampa Bay, but... I mean, you you have Stamkos, 34 years old. You're going to sign him how long? One-year deal, two-year deal, three-year deal? Like, he's your captain. Uh, it's kind of a player, I think, like, for the fan base, you probably don't want to move on from. Uh, Kucherov is at 30, but, you know, Kucherov is putting up 140 points, so you don't got anything to worry about that. Brain Point needs to be a little better for what he's being paid this year. And then you look at the depth. They got Tanner Janot. He hasn't really panned out the way they've hoped for. Nick Paul is a good depth player. Uh, Connor Sheary, Hagel is a very good player, but he goes up to 6.5 next year, making it a bit tight. That's accounted for in this cap space, though, in the projected cap space. But, you know, it's going to be hard for this team to add. Uh, Defense-wise, they're going to be getting Sergachev back as well, so the team should be a little better on defense with him in the lineup because he's a bona fide stud in the top four. So that would really help in this series. That's the one shining light here is you can say, well, we're going to get a healthy Mikhail Sergachev next year who didn't snap his leg versus new york uh or won't have a snapping leg like he did versus new york i should say <laughs> but regardless it's just kind of looking bleak for tampa bay like i think their days of contending for a cup are behind them could they make the playoffs next year yes can they maybe win around next year sure if they get the right things going for them but it's hard to see this team being anything better than that going forward just you got Hedman, who's now 33, a little bit slower, still a very good player, though. But it's just the depth, the way Tampa Bay came at you in waves in the past. It, it just doesn't feel like it's there. It doesn't feel like their bottom nine has what it used to have. And that's on the GM. And I know they lost Steve Eiserman, and they got, uh, I want to say his name is Francois. I, I can't remember his last name off the top of my head right now. But he has not been able to produce the depth that Steve Eiserman has. Are gave them because you can look at those teams it's, they're very much Eiserman teams that won the Stanley Cup and went to the Cup Final it's not really the new guy who stepped in so it's going to be quite the job for him to do that and if he is not able to and Tampa Bay starts missing the playoffs that guy's job might be in jeopardy let's focus on talking about a positive though we'll end up on talking about Florida here you can see on the right with the scoring Matt Kachuk leading the way uh Hard to argue he's not a top five player when it comes to playoff hockey. It really is. The dude produces. He puts the team on his back. Like, that's a leader. Like, I, I don't think you can name five other guys that you would rather have leading your team in the playoffs. I, I really don't. Uh, Carter Verhage, uh, third most overtime goals in playoff history in the NHL. Uh, pretty impressive there. Gustav Forsling, solid defenseman. Reinhardt, he's due a contract at the end of the year. Good year to score 56 goals for him. Uh, two and three games. If he keeps up that scoring pace goals to game, you'll be happy. Montour, two and three. Two and three for Tarasenko. Two and three for Lundell. Two and three for Barkov. You can see just the Florida depth is putting in a few points. Because these are tight games, but you can see a lot more production as you go down the line here out of the Florida depth than you see out of the Tampa Bay depth. You then look on the left here. Expect goal differential. Florida has... The second best right now, Colorado, they probably have the first best. This Colorado one's a little skewed from that wild game one where uh, they put up like 48 shots and scored six goals. Uh, that's a little bit of an outlier that's kind of stretching Colorado beyond them. But through three games, Florida clearly putting up the most amount of high quality chances that should go in compared to their opponent compared to any other matchup in the league right now. And you look, Bobrovsky has a 901 save percentage. And it's a little misleading just because Tampa Bay has scored, what, like seven goals this series, I want to say, seven or eight. Two of them are on the power play. Uh, 
they're not really getting a lot of chances. They've gotten some high quality chances, and this 901 is kind of misleading for Bobrovsky because he's played very well. It's just he hasn't faced a ton of quantity. He's faced some quality, which is why the goals are going in. As you can see, a 2.3 goals against should tell you everything you need to know right there. Uh, has not been facing a lot of shots, but Bobrovsky looks sharp. Don't let the save percentage fool you. He looks sharp. And with that being said, uh, I think this series is probably over in four games. I, I'm probably going to place a little bit of a bet on the Panthers money line tomorrow. Don't take my advice for betting advice. You know, I, I, I recommend making your own decisions. Don't come here blaming me for your loss if you do tail me. But uh, minus 125 for the Panthers tomorrow. They expect them to close it out. They're, they're giving Tampa plus 1,500 for the odds to come back in this series, which I think is a little bit generous, to be honest, compared to some of the other series odds you'll see. Uh, you'll see the Panthers on the left here were plus 700 going into the playoffs to win the cup. On the right is now the current odds at plus 450 as you start to weed out the field. And you see Tampa Bay has fallen quite a bit from their uh, projection just uh, about a week ago when they were uh, tied 0-0 in the series. So just some interesting things. I, I think Florida closes this out in four and uh, should be interesting to see how Florida goes in the future. And the question I'll pose to you before I end this video is, is, is Florida... Is, are the Florida Panthers going to go on another run to the cup final? I could see it. I really could see it. And I'm a Bruins fan, as you can see. Got the Winter Classic golf shirt on. And uh, I would not favor the Bruins in a series against the Panthers. Not after how they played last year, and I think Panthers are a better team this year. So I could see it. want to know what you think. Again, hit like if you like the video. Hit subscribe if you want to follow my content going forward. Hope to see you in the next videos going forward. And have a great day. Have a wonderful weekend, guys.